In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to the Mass today of the sixth Sunday of Easter. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You intercede for us with your Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which keep in honour, we keep in honour of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went to a Samaritan town and he proclaimed the Christ to them. The people united in welcoming the message Philip preached, either because they had heard of the miracles he worked or because they saw them for themselves. There were, for example, unclean spirits that came shrieking out of many who were possessed and severely and several paralyzed paralytics and cripples were cured. As a result, there was great rejoicing in that town. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, and they went down there and prayed for the Samaritans to receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet he had not come down on any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Cry out with joy to God all the earth, O serve, O sing to the glory of his name, O render him glorious praise, say to God how tremendous your deeds. Before you all the earth shall bow, shall sing to you, sing to your name, come and see the works of God, tremendous his deeds among men. He turned the sea into dry land, they passed through the river dry shore. Let our joy then be in him, for he rules forever by his might. Come and hear, all who fear God, I will tell what he did for my soul. Blessed be God, who did not reject my prayer, nor withhold his love from me. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Reverence the Lord Jesus in your hearts, and always have your answer ready for people who ask you the reason for the hope that you all have. But give it with courtesy and respect, and with a clear conscience, 
so that those who stand for you when you are living a good life in Christ may be proved wrong in their accusations that they bring. And if it is the will of God that you should suffer, it is better to suffer for doing right than for doing wrong. Why? Christ himself, innocent though he was, had died once for sins, died for the guilty to lead them to God. In the body he was put to death, in the spirit he was raised to life. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. We shall come to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I shall ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world can never receive. Since it neither sees him nor knows him, would you know him, because he is with you, he is in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come back to you. In a short time the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, and you will live. On that day you will understand that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Anybody who receives my commandments and keeps them will be the one who loves me, and anybody who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and show myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. At his trial in The Hague about six years ago, one of the Serb, Serb overlords was accused of genocide committed through the during the 1991-95 war. But at the same time, many of his fellow countrymen and women regarded him as a national hero. Did national pride them, blind them to the truth? And in the world of politics, we know that spin doctors are often at work behind the scenes in order to influence our thinking even though they may at times be sparing with the truth. As the old adage said, half the truth is a whole lie. In today's Gospel, Jesus promised his followers the spirit of truth. Now, the retired Pope Benedict some years ago said that contemporary man is wounded as a result of a crisis of the truth. Pilate's question to Jesus when he asked, Truth, what is that? That has become our question. In a certain sense, the very search for objective truth has been abandoned, the Holy Father Benedict said. Euthanasia is an example. Some people see it as an act of mercy, an act of compassion. But we know that boundaries can easily be crossed, allowing a dying person to die with dignity with somebody holding their hand. Now that surely is a very Christian thing to do, and we have seen some very gallant examples of that during the present pandemic. That's one thing, but speeding up a person demise when they're far from death's door, now that's another thing. Jesus said, the Father will send you another advocate, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world can never receive. Why can't worldly people receive the Spirit of Truth? One reason might be is because when they're making important moral decisions, they're mostly guided by how they feel at the time, or pressure from peers without taking into account the law of God, which is based on the Ten Commandments, and without taking into account the natural law, which is based on reason.
basically they're mostly focused on themselves and how they feel rather than what God has said about it. We know how unreliable, unreliable feelings are and many people who have made decisions years ago on the basis of how they feel often bitterly regret the decisions that they had made. Today, I would say we are far more tolerant of other religions than we used to be, which is to be commended. But whenever the Catholic faith is compromised by these religions, I think we should be prepared to say so. True ecumenism is not papering over the cracks. That's false ecumenism. St. Peter in the second reading today says that we must have our answers ready for people who question us about our faith. The Holy Father has said, that if we know the truth, must we hide it in the name of tolerance? For instance, some say that all religions are of equal value. According to them, if I decide to change my religion, it's not to be called a conversion, because that would assign a higher status to the faith I am joining and so contradict this idea of equality, which is often in the news these days. But there are also false ideas bandied about these days in the name of equality, especially in the area of marriage and relationships. But they are not based on the truth of our human nature. But as St. Peter says in the second reading, when we are discussing these things with people who are not of our faith, we should treat people with respect, with courtesy, with love in our hearts. Always speak the truth with love, not in anger. Jesus said to Pilate, I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth, and all who are on the side of truth listen to my voice. Now Pilate, we know, buried the truth, because he condemned Jesus to death, even though on several occasions he told the hostile crowd, that Jesus was indeed innocent. We too can at times play fast and loose with the truth. Jesus says in another part of the Gospel, the truth shall set you free. Now as we draw nearer to Pentecost, it's just a couple of Sundays away, let us pray that the Holy Spirit may free our lives from falsehood and error and help us always to stand and live by the truth. God bless you. In the midst of our needs, we pray to the Father of goodness. Let us pray for those who spread the gospel either through preaching or the written word. As the word of God takes a deeper root in our hearts, may they preach or write in such a way that hearts may be converted and lives renewed. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for those who work in the media, whether it be religious or secular. May they report on issues in a fair-minded way and not play fast and loose with the truth. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that bishops and priests may always speak with one voice on important moral issues and not compromise the gospel for fear of losing favour. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for the recently deceased, especially those who died in the past week of the coronavirus and those whose anniversaries we recall today in the week ahead. May eternal life be theirs. 
Lord hear us. Let us now pray to Mary, the mother of the incarnate word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pause now and pray for needs of our own. Lord, hear us. And now let us pray or answer the invitations to prayer by Pope Francis. Common prayer for the fifth anniversary of Laudato Si. Loving God, creator of heaven and earth and all that is in them, you created us in your own image and made us stewards of all creation. You blessed us with the sun, water, and bountiful land so that all might be nourished. Open our minds and touch our hearts so that we may attend to your gift of creation. Help us to be conscious that our common home belongs not only to us, but to all your creatures, and to all future generations, that it is our responsibility to preserve it. May we help each person secure the food and resources that they need. Be present to those in need in these trying times, especially the poorest and those most at risk of being left behind. Transform our fear and feeling of isolation into hope and fraternity, so that we may experience a true conversion of the heart. Help us to show creative solidarity in addressing the consequences of this global pandemic. Make us courageous to embrace the changes that are needed in search of the common good. Now more than ever, may we feel that we are all interconnected and interdependent. Enable us to listen and respond to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. May our present sufferings be the birth pangs of a more fraternal and sustainable world. Under the loving gaze of Mary, help of Christians, we make this prayer. Through Christ our Lord. Another prayer by Pope Francis. God of love, show us our place in this world as channels of your love for all the creatures of this earth, for not one of them is forgotten in your sight. Enlighten those who possess power and money that they may avoid the sin of indifference that they may love the common good, advance the weak, and care for this world in which we live. The poor and the earth are crying out, O Lord, seize us with your power and light. Help us to protect all life, to prepare for a better future, for the coming of your kingdom of justice, peace, love, and beauty. Praise be to you. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation.
expiation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with us. Lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our, our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. If you love me, keep my commandments, says the Lord, and I will ask the Father, and he will send you another paraclete to abide with you forever. Alleluia.
Christ.